because it is the highest praise. Hallelujah. Did he wake you up this morning? Hallelujah. Did he give you a close in your right mind? Hallelujah. Did he bring you through the highways and byways to come into his house of worship today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, praise him. You got a right to praise him. I don't know what you've been through all week, but he's kept me. Hallelujah. In my right mind, he's kept me through dangers seen and unseen. He kept me from dangers at night and a robber didn't come in. My house wasn't on fire. Hallelujah. There is no rocks that's going to cry out for me. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's been too good to me. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I don't need nobody to pump me up. I don't need nobody to start me up. I don't need nobody to pray me up. I came in with a praise on my mouth. I came in with an attitude of gratitude of who he is to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. We're going to continue our praise and worship with our praise team. Hallelujah.
say thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, because you alone are worthy of my praise, oh God. Lord, the old folks used to say in church, if I had a thousand tongues, I couldn't thank you enough of what you've done for me. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, praise team, for that ministry through song. Now we're going to have our morning hymn. Amen. Hallelujah. Scripture reading 
by our sister Donna Hackett. And then after that, we're going to have our invocational prayer. We're going to ask if Lady Williams would give us our invocational prayer. And guys, just like we've said before, it is a blessing that we can come in corporate worship and pray for our pastor emeritus and our interim pastor now. So when you open the invocation, we can pray together for that. Amen? Amen. from Hebrews 13, 1 through 8, the message version. That's Hebrews 13, 1 through 8. And it reads like this. Stay on good terms with each other, held together by love. Be ready with a meal or a bed when needed. Why, some have extended hospitality to angels without ever knowing it, regarding prisoners as if you were in prison Amen. with them. Look on victims of abuse as if what happened to them had happened to you. Honor marriage and guard your, your sacredness of sexual intimacy between wife and husband. God draws a firm line against casualties and illicit sex. Don't be obsessed with getting more material things. Be relaxed with what you have. Says God assures us, I'll never let you down, never walk off or leave you. We can boldly quote, God is there, ready to help. I'm fearless no matter what, who or what can get to me. Appreciate your pastor leaders who gave you the word of God. Take a good look at the way they live and let their faithfulness instruct you as well as their truthfulness. There, there should be a consistency that runs through us all for Jesus doesn't change. Yesterday, today, or tomorrow, he'll always totally be himself. I have read Hebrews 1 through 8. May the Lord add a blessing to the reader and the doer of his word. Amen. Amen. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, it's again, Lord God, that we come before your presence. We're honored, God. It's a privilege, Lord God, to come and be at your feet. And now, Lord God, you have called us to worship you in spirit and in truth. We invoke the presence of your spirit, Lord God, over us. Let him dwell in our heart and in our mind, Lord God, that we might be mindful of the great and marvelous things that thou hast done for us. Ending a new, a new a dawning a new year, Lord God, and you have blessed us all year long, God, to come to this place, to come, O oh Lord God, and to bow down before your presence. Come, O oh Lord God, now in spirit and help us, Lord God, to render ourselves unto thee. We thank you, O oh Lord, for those who are in assemblage, the, the uh, musicians, Lord God, who are here, the ushers who are here, those attending, Lord God, in deaconship and in deaconship and the preachers of the gospel, Lord God, who are here. We thank you, Lord God, for each person, Lord God, who sits on their pew awaiting a word from thee, a word from heaven, a word, Lord God, that would help their life, that would strengthen them. Bless us, God, now. Bless us, Lord God, that we should come as one to give you glory and to give you honor and to give you praise. We thank you, O oh Lord God, for Pastor Williams, Pastor Emeritus, and all that you have poured into him, Lord God. We even thank you right now, Lord God, for his faithfulness toward you. We thank you, O oh Lord God, for Pastor Scott and covering over us in such a way that would be pleasing to you, God. Bless us now, God. Come, oh Lord God, and magnify yourself. Those who are downstairs, Lord God, willing, Lord God, to still come in, Lord God, to give you praise. Even
even under their conditions and help, Father God. We pray for them. Bless, Father God, the word that shall come forth, Father God, that will be resounding in our heart and in our mind, Lord God, that you are our God and we are your people. We thank you, O Lord God, and ask for forgiveness of our sin, trespasses, and iniquities. Come, come now, Lord God, and bless us in such a mighty way that we would know that it come from thee. It's in Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Sister Donna Hackett for the word of God. I want to thank Lady Williams for the invocational prayer. And at this time, we will have our announcement by Trustee Doherty Scott. Good morning. Happy New Year's Eve to all of you. <laughs> This is our last Sunday of the year, and God has brought us this far. Amen. Amen. This evening, there will be New Year's Eve watch night service here at BTC at 10.30 p.m. Bible study will resume Wednesday, January 3rd at 7 p.m. On Saturday, January 6th, the hour of power will be held at 10 a.m. And also, there's a youth ministry um, event at 4 p.m., but this is just for the youth counselors. Um, just to note that it is just for um, the youth counselors. On Sunday, January the 7th, there will be a church meeting for all BTC members immediately following the morning service. On Monday, January 8th, Inspire Conference call will resume at 7 a.m. The women's and men's ministry will meet on Friday, January the 12th at 7 p.m. Save the date. The women's ministry invite BTC to an afternoon of paint and praise here at the church on Saturday, February the 10th, 12 noon until 3 p.m. Donations are $10. Lunch will be provided. Registration and fee are due by January the 27th, and please see Sister Jewel Taylor. Well, Sister Jewel Taylor is the ministry leader, so if you have any questions, um, you can see her for additional information. Amen? Um, Sunday school for all ages every Sunday morning at 8.45 a.m. New members classes meet Sunday at 8.45 a.m. as well. Wednesday night Bible study every week at 7 p.m. and Inspire, which will resume on January the 8th. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 a.m. And the information is in your bulletin. Also, we want to, um, the Deaconess Ministry would also like to let you know that there are various brands and sizes of diapers, no size five or six, disposable training pants, two to three T, four to five T, wipes, and Similac formula. If you know someone in need, please let um, Deaconess Janice or Sister Muriel Jackson know. Our sick and, and 
Deaconess Deborah Brown, Sister Angel Knight, Sister Diane Robinson, Sister Deborah Jones, Sister Brenda McDaniel, Sister Hosna Thornton, Sister Wilda Torres, and also continue to keep Sister Hanaya in your prayers. And we're glad to see Sister Michelle Vaughn in service. Oh, and also please keep Deacon Barber in your prayers as well. Um, so I know that this is the um, New Year's Eve, and we, so we start with um, making all these resolutions that we're going to um, eat less, exercise more, a whole bunch of stuff, spend, spend less money. You know, they say whatever you do on New Year's Day is what you're going to do all year. So, you know, just come up with all these things that we come up with, but we have to come up with obtainable goals. And so we have a God that makes us, when you took at your spiritual side, and this is including me, that if you didn't come to Sunday school, you're going to come at least start off with one Sunday a month. If you don't come to Bible study at all, you're going to start off with one Wednesday a month. You're going to continue, but we're going to ask God to grow us to be stronger, to learn more about him. So the biggest thing I could come up with was uh, MLC, and that was more, like, excuse me, <clears throat> more, I said it wrong, didn't I? But I was talking about what we could be when you say all the stuff that you can be um, to be more Christ-like. So if that, I and mean, then just be more Christ-like. And that'll answer more Christ-like, more forgiveness, more loving, more kind. And then that'll help us go to the gym and eat less. Amen. <laughs> I don't know about all that eating less. We can go to the gym, though. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We ask that you will govern yourself accordingly to the announcements of uh, Baptist Temple. We'd like to welcome our visitors, those that are in the house with us today, 365 days of the year, 8,740 hours in the year, yet God still allow you to see this morning, and we serve a mighty God. We thank all those that are here. Baptist Temple, tonight is our watch night. We pray that you could join us, 1030. Those who can't, hopefully we'll be uh, streaming it live. Amen. So that you will come. We're going to have some praise dancing, some singing, and then the word. We ask that you will come and join with us in the corporate prayer. We're looking forward for 2024 and what God has for us. Again, Baptist Temple, know that on next Sunday we will have our church meeting after service, we ask asking all members, all members, if they can come uh, for this meeting that's going to be on next Sunday. Uh, the second Sunday in January, we will be installating all officers. Please get all your officers, all who's president and uh, all the names to Sister Muriel so that she can put that on on the second Sunday of January, we will be installing all officers. Baptist Temple, we're looking forward in, sep in February um, to be able to uh, charge Sister Corinne as a deaconess in the Baptist Temple Church. We're looking for a date that we're going to give her. She has been walking. It got to a point she started crawling, but we know <laughs> That God has been blessing her. So we want to uh, install her as a deaconess of the Baptist Temple Church. Um, we will give you that date so you can tell your family and friends to come out so we can celebrate with you as a deaconess of Baptist Temple Church. Baptist Temple, we need to pray for one another. We need to know that God is still in control no matter what goes on. We serve a mighty God. We're going to now have our ushers come forward for our offering. Please stand and face the outer walls. We still have our Youth Sunday. There's a collection that's on the outside for the youth and for the church to be on the table. The church will be on the table. The youth is on the end.
let us pray. Father God, we thank you, O oh God, for these tithes and offerings. Lord, we ask that you would bless and increase, O oh God, that we may be an, an, an oasis in an other, other, otherwise arid and destitute community. We thank you for the giver, Lord God. We thank you for the gift. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 I know we have enjoyed the ministry of music and we have enjoyed clapping our hands and being in his presence. But the reason why you're here is for the word of God, because that is what's going to hold you two o'clock in the morning. That is what's going to keep you as the guidepost, right? His word that will be a lamp unto your feet. But how can you hear without a man that is sent there? Give you the word. And that man this morning will be Pastor Scott, who is the interim pastor here at Baptist Temple Church. And I don't know about you, but I need a word, y'all. What? I've been through some stuff. And yes, I've had my devotion every morning. And yes, on Wednesday when Bible study was in, I was there. And when Sunday school's there, I'm sitting right there getting my spiritual education. But I want to hear from the shepherd today. I want to be able to graze in the field today. That when I leave here, I would be encouraged to try it again. I would be in, encouraged to restore my soul. And we thank God for the man of God who has labored before God for us that is about to break the bread of life to us, to give us life. So I'm praying that you would not sit at your tent door and just gaze at the man of God, but that you would sit at your tent doors and open your mind, open your heart for why he has you here on this day. There is no accident that you're here. There is a reason why he has a word for you today. I pray that you receive it in the name of Jesus. So after we have a selection from the praise team, the choir, we will hear from Pastor Daryl Scott Sr. Hear ye him.
what I do, y'all. I praise him in the morning. I praise him at night. It's what I do. I'm compelled to praise him. He's worthy. He watches over us no matter what. It's what I do. I know, I know, I know, I know. You praise him too. It's what you do. I can see it in your face. It's what you do. And when you praise him, he begins to bless you. He shows up when no one else shows up. He do the things that no one else can do. Hallelujah. So 
Somebody said, somebody said, somebody said, somebody said, they don't, they don't run around in Baptist temple. They, they don't run around the church in Baptist temple. Somebody said, somebody said, all they do is stand in place. Somebody said, they don't do what the people do. They don't get up and shout. They don't go and run around. But I got to tell you something. If you know what God has done for you, if you know how he guides you, if you know, you'll start to run it. You'll start to run it. You'll start to run it. Because he's running. He's running. He's running. He's running. Yeah, that's right. I'm running around in a new hip, y'all. I'm running around in a new hip, y'all. God gave me a new hip. He allowed me to walk with a new hip. I, I know how good he is. I know what he can do, y'all. I watch him hold me. And he's worthy. Worthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all started it. Y'all started with it with praise is what I do. Y'all the ones started that. Y'all brought up the praise. And he's worthy. Yes, he is. He is worthy. Yes, yes. There is a word from the Lord this morning to my Lord and Savior who I strive to make first in my life. That's something we all should be doing on a daily basis. I know, I know, I know. We say he is, but then the next day we don't. So we need to strive more in having him first. To Reverend Cornell N. Williams, pastor emeritus. What a mighty man God has given us as a shepherd. To Lady Williams, we love you. Oh, my God. She was teaching Bible uh, Sunday school this morning. And I was like, is it over with already? She has illuminated the word of God. We need it for our nourishment. I know we ate breakfast, but we came for another breakfast. And that was the word of God to Reverend Jackson. They call him Reverend J now, y'all. That's Reverend J. He's awesome. He is the original Jackson to Reverend Logan and his absent to Minister Schultz, my sister. Awesome praise you have this morning. Listen, she prays like that all the time. Sometimes she prays so long, we're like, excuse me. <laughs> but you don't know her story, y'all. I know her story. So go on, girl. Go on. For God. We serve a mighty God. To, back, to, Reverend, to Deacon Barber in his absence, we pray for him. Uh, Deacon Barber and Deaconess Jackson in her absence. Both of the chairs are out, but we pray for them that God continue to bless them. And to Baptist Temple, hootie who? Hootie ha, oh, yeah, yeah, I hear that, I hear that. Family that prays together stays together. Truly it does. And to my wife, Rochelle, 18 years, y'all. I love that girl. Yes, I do. I'll, I'll collect the money later for saying it. I'm sorry. I got you? Okay. <laughs> there is a word from the Lord. Yes, it is. I'm asking everyone to stand. Everyone stand before I lose my voice. <laughs> oh, my God. Everyone understand? We're going to ask if you turn to 2 Corinthians, uh, this fifth chapter, and I'll be reading the 17th and the 18th. I just have up there the 17th. I was going to stop there, but the Lord wanted me to go on just a little more. I'm not going to be long. I'm not going to be long. He got a word for you. 
So we ask that you would be attentive to his word. 2 Corinthians 5, 5th chapter, 17, 18. I'm reading our New King James. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, I will say that one more time. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to him through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. I'm going to ask if you would turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. What is new about you? What is new about you? Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you because you have brought us here this morning. Last day of the year, Lord. Yet, we have so much we went through in the beginning of the year. And yet, you still kept us, Lord. The sins we have committed through the years, yet you still kept us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for you are worthy to be praised. We ask that you forgive us for our sins, Lord, for we need you to bless us, Lord. I ask, Lord, that we move self. Allow the Holy Spirit to use me, Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. What's, What's new about you? Can somebody say, you knew? I know, I know. When you go shopping and you buy yourself some shoes, some good shoes, you keep the box. Because when you take the shoes off, you put it right back in the box. You know, when, when you bought that new car, you know, ain't nobody can sit in your car and eat or drink because you still got that, hmm, that new car smell. You don't want nobody in there messing up your car. What about when you decide to buy a new living room set? See, 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 see y'all are messed up. Because you called it a living room set. But you don't let nobody sit in there. Because that's the living room set. Some of us got living rooms nobody get in. But it's a living room. At least that's what we call it. How about when you got that job? You know, that brand new job, you were there every day. No, if you need any hour, need me, you want an extra hour, I would do it. I would do it. I could do it. You stayed even late. Yeah. You helped folks up. That new job. Remember? How about when you bought that new dress? Ooh, Lord. Or that suit. You took the hanger along with it. So that when you got home and took it off, you put it in the hanger, you put it in the closet, and you just look at it. Because it's it's new. How about when you gave your life to Christ? You was in Sunday school. Every time the door opened. Bible study. Not only were you in Bible study, you was asking questions. You couldn't wait. You probably were the first one there. You remember? Remember? New. What's new about you? See, the only thing about new is that it get old. That's the only thing about new. And sometimes we let it get old because we want to buy something else new. But in the text, I want to show you about something that's new that never get old. It never get old no matter how long it takes. The reason why you don't wear the outfit no more because you can't fit it. <laughs> it's probably still new. But after one, two, all right, two tries. You took it out to eat, now you can't fit it. Can't fit the shoes. Feet swell up every now and then. 
question is, what is new about you? And there's some things in the text you've probably never seen before. You read it many times, many times. But he always has something you haven't. Paul starts off by saying, therefore. And the question is, what is it there for? Paul always have a line of why he says one thing that represents the other. The content of this text is Paul was talking to the Corinthian church about when they gave their Christ life to Christ, some of the benefits you can get. Folks, folks were being swayed away from when they gave their life to Christ and started doing things they ought not do. But Paul wanted to remind them, he wanted to remind them that when you gave your life to Christ, you became brand new. How can that be? Nicodemus said to Jesus, how can one be born again? And Jesus said, between water and spirit, there's no way you can be. But, but the question was, Jesus said to Nicodemus, how is it that you're trying to understand spiritual things and you can't even understand earthly things? Yet still, here we are, giving our life to Christ, declaring we're brand new, but acting old. But it's in the text. Because Paul said, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, listen, 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 because this is very important. He said, if anyone is in Christ, not know Christ, not read about him, mama can't, mama can't give you Christ and you say, okay, I got it. Daddy can't do that. You could come to church every Sunday if you want to. But you got to be in Christ to know Christ. There was a reason why he said in Christ because folks get so confused about Christ. When reality is you need to have a relationship with him. Paul explains that if you're in Christ, you should be thinking like Christ. Because when he gave you a new spirit, you became brand new. What, what do you mean? A new spirit. I, I can remember when I gave my life to Christ when I was a young, a young lad. <laughs> and, and, and it seems that uh, I, I just couldn't understand that when I gave my life to Christ, I still was doing the bad things. You ever, you ever go to that? Oh, no, not you, not you, not you. You, know, you, you, you. you gave your life to Christ, but yet still you were yearning to do the things that you know is not good. Because it felt good. Yeah. Somebody was feeling good last night in the sin. Lord, forgive me. Ain't that what you're saying? I remember, I remember, I remember that I thought that because I was still doing the things I was doing, that I actually didn't give my life to Christ. Until I realized that I have three parts to a human. Spirit soul, and body. When I gave my life to Christ, my spirit became brand new. Listen, 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 listen. My spirit became brand new. My soul is the communicator between my spirit and my flesh. See, 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 when my spirit became brand new, I was supposed to be doing the new thing. But because I'm covered up in flesh, and flesh is so contrary to God, I was doing the things I shouldn't be doing. And I knew I was wrong. But it felt good. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why the difference comes. I'm going to tell you why the difference comes. 
When, 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 when you accept Christ, you become a new creature, a new creation. Yeah, 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 you knew, you knew if you accept him. But how do you accept him? Romans 10, 9 said, if you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, that Jesus Christ died and risen again, you shall be saved. But what comes after salvation? Sanctification. How is that going to happen? Paul says, if you are in Christ, you become a new creature and old things pass away. What? What do you mean old things pass away? I still don't like that girl. What do you mean old things pass away? I still like to dip and dab. What do you mean old things pass away? I'm still a mess. But he's not going to bless that mess. There's no way he's going to bless it. You in a mess. But he is going to care for you. Because when you have a new spirit, you belong to him. Listen, listen, listen. Sin cannot touch your new spirit. So why, why, why am I still sinning? I know why you're still sinning. Because you want to. You have no excuse. Oh, oh, the devil made me do it. I just slipped right into sin. I'm sorry. You want to. Your nature is, your body wants to sin, but you're a new creature. He threw all of your sins away. Everything you did in the past is gone. So why? Why are you reminiscing on it? Why is it when you walk in front of something that you did wrong and cut you down, you decide to turn around? Some of us don't even come into church because we sinned some long time ago. And in your mind, all you can think is they remember. And now you are no use. You are free of sin. There is no bond on you. He took it away when you accept him. No, 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 no. If you are in Christ. 2024 is on his way, and some of us are still questioning, did I give Christ my life? Well, think about it. What you've been doing in 2023? Have you been talking to the ones you don't like? Have you forgiven the ones that you thought you can't forgive? Have you been praising the Lord? You've been in the Word. The Word says, study to show thyself approved unto God. See, when you start to put the Word in you, it regulates your soul, which regulates the spirit that control the flesh. See, 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 see. Paul said, Paul said, if you remove this thorn from my flesh, I can serve you more. What was Paul thinking? See, in the garden, it's not my fault, y'all. It's not your fault neither. But in the garden, when Adam and Eve was in there, their transgression is why you are a sinner. And it don't makes no difference who you are, how nice you are. You know, you, you got the nice one. I ain't, mm -mm, I ain't sin that one time in my life. As pastor would say, you lie. That's a sin. <laughs> because of that, because of that, your flesh is contrary to the Lord. And when Paul said, if you could take this out of my flesh, I can almost hear him saying, Lord, I can praise you more, but this flesh is holding me back. I can love more, but this flesh is pulling me down. I can do, Lord, you don't know what they said about me. You don't know what they did to me. You don't know how I'm trying to hold on. But he do now. 
He do know y'all. Don't put yourself to that pity party. Because that's what we do. Oh, but they talked about me so much. They took my money. I can't make it. Somebody, please. You asked him to come into your life. It was you that he saved. It was you that he changed. You're the new person. Why are you still acting old? Why are you still grabbing on stuff to hold you back? So what he walked out your life? So what he left you? So what you ain't got no money? You still here? You ain't eat last night? He look kind of heavy, baby. It don't look like you lost any weight. You ain't got a house to go to? Yet you still here? Nothing is new under the sun. You think this is something new for you? Do you remember when you were down and out? Do you remember the loved one you had died and you said to the Lord, why? Now I'm by myself and now you holding that on him? Every time somebody died, you say, I understand what you're going through. Yeah, I understand that. But instead of encouraging them, get up. I did. I made it. You are a new creature. The creation that God has in you is now new. I know it's not every day. Now, now let, me get, let me get this right. You knew, but this body may not be. Yes. And I'm going up them stair steps, y'all. My knees get to crickle. I hope I ain't got to get a new knee. I don't know. Yes, I sometimes have headaches that I can't seem to get away of. Yes, I got pain in my body. But let me tell you something about these pains. Some of these cricket in your knees. Some of this is consequences, y'all. Do you remember what you was doing back in the day? You done drunk somebody under the table later in your life, remember? You done smoked up. You done had a smoke party, shotgun. Let's get that done. You've been cheating all your life. And you wonder why you can't get a relationship. You don't know what a relationship is. You've been lying so much. Nobody believe you. They got asked two times. What did you say? Didn't I just tell them? Your consequences is always going to come there. But yet he still loves you. Because you are a new creature. Old things pass away. New things come. Hmm. What does that mean? See, the reason why you are stagnant in your blessing is because you're still holding on to your past. The reason why you're not growing is because every day you get up, you think about what happened. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to talk to him because I know what's going to happen. We're going to go out. We had a nice time. Then he ain't going to call me no more. I'm not. I'm not going to leave this job because last time it took me a long time to leave this job so I'm going to take the abuse. I'm going to let them talk about me. I'm going to let them make me feel bad. I'm going to let them tell the jokes. I'm going to let them do what they want. When the new is coming but it can't come because you're holding on to the past. New creature, new creature, new creature. What is new about you? Why do folks look at you all the time? You remember, you was one of the cheeriest person there was. People was coming up to you, hey girl, how you doing? Now they don't want to talk to you. They don't want nothing to do with you. I, I always used to say to folks, 
when you're about to greet folks, make sure you have some type of gum or candy with you. Because your breath can make a person run the other way. Y'all looking at me like, what are you talking about? I thought he was preaching. He's going to talk about somebody's breath. Let me tell you something. When you want to be a blessing, you got to be prepared to be a blessing. Some little thing can turn somebody south. I don't want to hear from her, you know. No, there you go. When you're about to talk to somebody, you better come with a cheerful voice. You knew the old things had passed away. I watched the kids today, and they dancing and moving and doing their thing, all kinds of, man, I was tired watching them. <laughs> but I realized, all they was doing was the robot slow. The robot. But they were doing it fast. Ain't nothing new under the sun. So when you're about to give somebody God's word, you have to be prepared for it. And in order to be prepared for it, the new thing that he want to give you. Yeah. You know what's so new? Forgiveness. Mm. Seem to be one of the things we have a hard time. I ain't get there yet. I'm trying. What? Did you not hear he's your new? You ain't get there because you don't want to. You know, we... We can be honorary real quick, y'all. Yeah, yeah. We can want to be in a spot in our lifetime right now because we believe that we earn it. We deserve it. <laughs> when, when Paul says, if you're in Christ, being in Christ means Christ-like. Being in Christ means doing Christ things. Being in Christ is like Forgiving them 70 times 7. Being in Christ means turn, oh Lord, turn the other cheek. Being in Christ is like helping one another. Being in Christ is like coming to learn his word. Being in Christ is seeking first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. These things are the coming. And you wonder why you were in the position you are. 2024, we said, we said, we said, Lord, this year coming, I'm going to do better. And you don't even know if you're going to make it to the new year. Why not do better now? He said, old things pass away. Behold, new things have come and have, and have put on a new self, which is being renewed in a knowledge after the image of the creator, Colossians 3.10. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plan I have for you, declare the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for evil to give you future and your hope. God already know what he got for you, y'all. Yeah. He already know what he wants you to do. He already know what your future is. The problem is you don't want to be in Christ. I know, I know. I'm in Christ. But yet still, you're going through some things because you don't want to say no to self and yes to God. Brother Jackson says, sheep make sheep. And that is so true. But sheep can also terrorize sheep. What type of sheep you making? When they come in, do you gossip with them? Yo, let me tell you what happened. Now their gossip. Oh, let me tell you what happened. Well, I don't know. This is what we do here. Ain't that what we do? We gossip. Folks say, I don't want to go to church. Them folks in there are hypocrites. They talk about you. They doubt things about you. Listen, I'm glad that we have hypocrites, y'all. 
I know who you are. I wouldn't want to work and walk in a perfect church. You want to know why? Because there is none. <laughs> and if you think you're going to walk into a church that is perfect, I got news for you. There's only one perfect person, and that was Christ Jesus Christ. Yet he says, if you are in Christ, you are in me. And if you are in Christ, you died on the cross with him. You raised with him. So why are you still in a funk? So why don't you, why don't you, why don't you go get them shoes out that box, polish them, and if you can't fit it, give it to somebody else. Why don't you go get the dress that you now got laid down on the chair? It ain't never get but the hanger yet. You still looking for it under the rest of the clothes you got. Why don't you go in the living room and clean it? Because you've been sleeping in it. You've been eating in it. It's now in a dining room bedroom slash. Why don't you go get that car, clean it out? Your trunk is a mess. If we look at some of our trunks now, Lord have mercy. Your hoarder, your hoarder. Why don't you go to work? Stop calling out. I know you got PTO times. Folks in there need you. Do you remember when you started, you was giving sunshine out? But because you allow the sin around you, you start, stop giving it. And you wonder why the job is now a job you don't want to be around. It's because of you. Bring the sunshine back. I know, I know. Sunday school is too early. Sheesh. You're talking 8, 8.30, 8.45 in the morning. And I got to go to work at 7 o'clock. You can go to work, but you can't go to Sunday school. Listen, listen, listen. The reason why Sunday school and Bible study is so important is because you got to feed the spirit in order for you, in order for you, in order for you to be in Christ. You're getting beat down with flesh every day, aren't you? I know you are, I do. I need a refreshing. I need something to keep me going. I need the word of God. Because your word is not helping me. And I need something that's going to move my spirit. Because my spirit can control my soul. My soul can beat down on the flesh that is trying to make me go in another way. So get up. Put on a new pair of shoes. Put on a new outfit. Listen, listen, listen. Make sure you wash before you put that outfit on. <laughs> Don't come in here perfume stink. You know, people like to just put things with perfume. Nah, I'm, gum. I'm clean. But you smell perfume stink. That is why, that is why he washed you white as snow. That is why the blood covered you. That is why when you call him, he comes to you. Because you are in Christ. So Paul says, so Paul says, he says that once this has happened, you are reconciled. You know what that means? To be reconciled? Do you know what he's talking about? Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about that next Sunday. What's new about you? I know. You, you thought you were brand new, didn't you? You thought everything was going good with you. Yeah, you were holding on to something that you shouldn't be holding on to. Because he took it.
See, sin can't touch your spirit because it's new. If you are in Christ. Sometimes we guess we are. But you got to know you are. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died and risen again, you shall be saved. That's all it takes. You do not have to go home, get things set and ready, and then come back. Because by the time you get home, he may come. And you ain't had a chance to. You may have thought you gave your life to Christ some time ago, but yet still, there's no change. There should be a change in your life. Doors of the church is open. Last day of 2024. Don't walk into 2000, last 23. Don't walk into 2024 unsaved. You may not make it. Here's your chance. Here is your chance. Do it now while you got a chance. The doors of the church is open. Give your life to Christ. He want to make you brand new. He want all your sins to be thrown away. And only he can do it. Doors open. Get right with Christ. Yes. Second call. You may have gave your life to Christ sometime, but you stepped away, and you want to come back. He is a God of another chance. So why not come now? Come on back to the Lord. He's been waiting for you. Had he not shown himself, you wouldn't have known. Do it while you got time. serve a mighty God. Altar call. Anybody who wants prayer, please come forward. Altar call. And Sister Jules will come and give prayer. This is the last Sunday of 2023. Altar call. Come give God. You have not because you ask not. Notice, notice, you are a new creation. Old things have passed away. Stop harping on that old sin. Amen, amen. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Father and all wise God, Lord, we come to you as humbly as we know how, with bowed heads and humble hearts. Thanking you, Father God for doing it yet again. Lord God, we thank you for the word that went forth. What's new about you? That is a self-examination. Search yourself and ask yourself, what's new about me? Those things that we should rid ourselves of, oh Lord, we need your help, oh God. We don't want to carry into 24 the things of 23. We want to start anew, oh God. We want to be 
followers of you, Christ. So we come to you today, Father God, asking you, oh God, to give us that that we need, Father God, for this journey. We know that we've come to the altar this morning, Father God. Some of us, Father God, have heavy hearts. Some of us have lost loved ones in 23. Some of us have come down with illnesses in 23. Some of us, Father God, have rocky marriages in 23. Some of us, Father God, are struggling mentally. Some of us, Father God, have, have turned from you, oh God. But we're asking, oh God, before we walk into 24, oh God, we're asking, oh God, that you would cleanse us, Father God. We ask that you would touch on our minds, Father God. Renew our minds, oh God. We're asking, Father God, if you would reunite us, Father God, back to our first love, which is you, oh God. We're asking, oh Lord, that we would reconnect, Father God, with you and start coming out to learn of you, oh God. We cannot serve a God that we do not know. We're grappling with some things, Father God, that we're trying to deal with on our own, oh God. But we can't do it without you, oh God. It's only through you and by you that all things are possible. So we ask, oh God, right now, oh God, you know exactly what everybody's around the altar, what their need is, Father God. I don't claim to know what they're here for, but because they're here, I know they have a need, oh God. So we ask, oh God, that you would meet them at their need according to your riches and glory, oh God. <coughs> Lord God, we're asking, oh God, that you would just continue to build up our young men to be men of God, oh God. We're asking you that you would touch our young women so that we will be women of God, not just women, but women of God, oh God. I'm praying, Father God, that we would look at ourselves, Father God, and see how we represent you, Father God, how we dress, how we talk how we walk, how we entreat people, oh God. We're praying, oh God, that before we walk into 24, oh God, that we would do a self-examination, oh God, to ask ourselves, are we followers of Christ? Lord God, I just pray for each child that's represented around the circle. I pray that you would continue to allow your spirit to fall a pressure on them, Father God. Build a hedge of protection around them as they go out, oh God. Because I know that Satan would desire to sift them as we. But Lord, we're praying for our children, oh God. We're praying, Father God, that they will be our next leaders, Father God. Praying, Father God, that we will be an example before them, oh God. We're just praying, Father God, that you would continue to bless Baptist Temple. Bless each leader. Bless each minister. <coughs> Bless, Father God. Bless each usher. Bless each choir member. Bless, Father God, from the front to the back door, oh God. We're praying, oh God, for our pastor and Meredith, Father God, that you would just touch him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Get on the inside, oh God. You know exactly what's going on in the body, Lord, because you said that you made him and you blessed him while he was yet in his mother's womb, oh God. You called him to do a great work, oh God. I pray that you would continue to bless his hands and everything he touches in your name, Father God, that it will be magnified. I pray, oh God, that you would touch him in his mind. Bring back to his remembrance those things, Father God, that y'all talked about. Praying, oh God, that you would continue to bless his helpmate, oh God. Continue, Father God, to hold her up, instruct her where she may be weak, Father God. Praying, oh God, that you would continue, Father God, to allow her to hold up the arms of her husband, oh God, that she will be the helpmate that you're calling for in these last and evil days, oh God. Lord God, we pray for Pastor Scott, Father God, that you would continue, Father God, to give him that desire, Father God, to lead your children, oh God. Give him new ways and new means, Father God. Show him your people, oh God, and show him how to reach us, oh God. Pray, oh God, for those that are coming from the outside that are coming in, Father God. Somebody said that I hear the sound of the abundance of rain 
That's those souls that are coming in. They're coming in hungry. They're coming in looking for something, oh God. I'm praying, Father God, that when they come in, that they will find us so doing, oh God. Pray, Father God, for those of us that have been here and that have been under a great word, Father God. Pray, Father God, that we will use that that you've given us, oh God. Pray and thank you, Father God, for this year, 2023, Father God. But we pray, Father God, that you would be with us as we cross over the threshold into 24. So we praise you and we thank you for these and many other blessings. In your son Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. that you would uh, remember tonight, 10.30, we start our watch night. Those that can and will uh, show up, we will have it live. So if you're sitting home, you can see that. Um, if you got to come from the party, just step aside from the party for a couple of minutes Amen. and hear what God has for you. I ask that you continue to pray for my wife. She got to put up with me all this time. In 18 years, and I ask you continue to keep us in your prayer. Amen. Father God, we thank you. We know that you are worthy to be praised. Thank you for 2023, Lord, for you have watched us. You kept us, Lord, even in the midst of our wrongdoing. Yet you still forgive us, and we thank you for that, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you will bless us now as we begin to leave the place, Lord. Guide everyone, Lord. Let them realize that they are new creation. Walk in your newness. That's what he wants you to do. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his ever-present. To the only wise God, our Savior, dominion, power, and glory, let the church sing. Amen.
I lost my voice. <laughs>